A wonder strange as e'er was known That what I knell shall treat upon In Suffolk and there did lately dwell A farmer rich and known full well. The fine town of Beckles is on the border of Norfolk and Suffolk and this is a story um, from that town from about 200 years ago, something like that. Um, at the time there was a, a farmer called Mr Sandon who owned an awful lot of land ar around um, Beckles. He just had one daughter um, and the daughter's name was Emma. Uh, he, his wife had died in childbirth and he lavished all his, lots of his fortune upon Emma. He sent her away to a school and then eventually to a finishing school in somewhere like Switzerland. When, when she came back, he thought she was absolutely wonderful and that she would be the kind of person who would marry a duke or an earl or a lord. That was her idea. That was his idea. She was fantastic at doing things like playing the piano and the embroidery and telling the cook what foods went with what wines and things like that. But when the summer came along, she got a little bit bored and she took to walking around her father's fields and she used to walk in the same direction and there was one field where there was a, a man who was often working one of her, her father's employees. His name was Jethro Banks and after a little while she took to stopping and chatting with him and the chat, chatting got longer and longer and eventually they took to meeting in the evenings and they tried to meet in a secret place in the corner of the cemetery in the middle of the town of Beckles by the church. There was only one person who ever saw them there, and that was the grave digger. Anyway, one day, Jethro plucked up courage, and he said to him, Emma, we've been meeting like this for a long time. Do you not think we ought to get married? And she jumped up and put her arms around him, and she said that she, she would marry him. And they were so excited that they went uh, and found the grave digger and they told the grave digger their happy news and the grave digger said that's wonderful because I'm surrounded by all this death and if there's one thing better than stronger than death it's love. Anyway Jethro said I'll come and see your father this evening. In the evening Emma and her father were in the drawing room when there was a knock on the front door. Now this was very unusual because people normally went round to the back door of this very posh house. Anyway um, Mr. Sandon went and opened, opened the door, and there's Jethro. And Mr. Sandon said, well, what, what's wrong, Jethro? Why have you come to the front door? Is there a barn on fire or something like that? And Jethro said, no, I've come to tell you something, Mr. Sandon. I mean, he said, well, you'd better come in. And they went into the drawing room, and there was Emma sitting down. And Jethro stood in front of the fire, and he said, Mr. Sandon, um, I've come to um, tell you that your daughter and I are going to get married. Mr. Sandon got red and redder and redder and redder and he turned to Emma and he said, Emma, get up in your room now! And she rushed out of the door and went up to her room and Mr. Sandon turned to Jethro and he said, Banks, you're going to remove yourself from my house, you're going to remove yourself from my farm and we will never see you again. And he pushed him out of the door. He went back inside and he went up to Emma's room and he said, Emma, Get your things, put them in a bag, and I'm going to get one of our servants to take you all the way to London. And you're going to stay with my brother in London until you come to your senses. And that's what happened. Emma went in the coach all the way to London. And Jethro, bad things happened to Jethro, because in those days, if you lost your job, you lost your house. And he went from one farm to another to try and get get work and he couldn't get any because Mr. Bank, Mr. Sandon had said don't employ Jethro Banks. So eventually Jethro ended up where people ended up with no money in those days in the workhouse and there was a lot of illness in the workhouse and eventually Jethro caught a horrible illness and he died and he was buried by the church tower in Beckles and um, the grave digger who he, he'd seen and met and who knew them dug the grave and it was an unmarked grave because Je Jethro was a pauper, he had no one to pay for a, a stone or a cross. Anyway, a few months later Emma was in London in her uncle's house and there was a knock on the door. 
and Uncle went, went and answered it. He opened the door, and then he came rushing back in. He said, Emma, Emma, you, your father has sent Jet Jethro to, to bring you, take you back to Beckles. And then Emma said, are you sure? She said, yeah, 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 that Jethro's just outside on one of your father, father's horses. Get your stuff and come down, because you see, her uncle knew, knew that she loved, loved Jethro very much. And anyway, Emma got her bag, came downstairs, and um, there was Jethro, and there was one of her father's best horses, and they, they hugged each other, and they got up on the horse, Jethro in the front, and Emma on the back, and they rode off into the night, and it was amazing how quickly they seemed to be going. The stars were flying past them all the way from London. And Emma was feeling so affectionate that she put her hand forward and she touched Jethro's neck and it was really cold. And she said, Jethro, Jethro you're, you're really cold. And she took her scarf off and wrapped it round his neck. Anyway, they carried on and by first light of the, the morning, they had got back to her father's farm. Amazing, it's 80 miles in in one night. And Jethro said, Emma, you go, go inside now. I'll put the horse in the stable and rub it down and, and make it better. And she went inside and Jethro went in the stable. And the father was having breakfast and he said, Emma, what are you doing here? Why have you come here from London? And she said, well, you sent Jethro to, to come and get me. No, I didn't. What are you talking about? Yes, he, he came and got me on, on your, your horse and he's out there rubbing it down now. And Mr. Sandon rushed outside and got to the stable and there was the horse and it was still steaming and, and sweating um, but there was no sign of Jethro. Anyway, Miss, Mr. Sandon went back inside and he said, Emma, um, I'm sorry to say that Jethro died a few months ago. He can't have died, he came to get me. Yes, he did, he died and he's, he's buried in the churchyard by the church tower. I don't believe you, take me there. So they went there, and there was the unmarked grave underneath the church tower. And Emma said, it could be anyone's. How do we know whose it is? And Mr. Sandon said, well, I think we'd better go and get the grave digger. And they went and went to the grave digger's house. And Mr. Sandon chatted away with the grave digger, and Emma could hear some coins clinking as they were passed from one person to another. And the grave digger came out with his spade, and they went into Beckles churchyard and the grave digger started to dig and he dug and he dug and he dug and he dug down until plonk the spade hit the side of a coffin and he wiped the soil off it and Mr. Bank, Mr. Sandon said open it up and he put the spade in the side of the coffin and opened it up and there was Jethro and he was sort of greeny, bluey coloured, and obviously been there a while. And round his neck was Emma's scarf. And she screamed. And a few weeks later she got really ill and she died and she was buried next to Jethro. And when the grave digger finished filling in the grave, he turned to Mr Sandon. He said, Mr Sandon, if there's one thing stronger than death, it's love. A wonder strange as e'er was known That what I now shall treat upon In Suffolk and there did lately dwell A farmer rich and known full well He had a daughter fair and bright On whom he placed his chief delight